Hello beautiful people, I'm Alana and welcome to my IRL channel where I post vloggy stuff. But I haven't for two months. That's my bad. Yeah, I haven't uploaded here or streamed as much this year and my podcasts have taken a bit of a hit because of health garbage. I might make a video about it separately, um, but the short of it is that I have a condition called CFS and sometimes it has like what are called flare-ups. And so most of this year I've just been working or dealing with that and not doing that much in between, to be honest. But here I am. I'm in San Francisco right now in my hotel room. I just finished work because I still work whenever I do stuff like this. So it's kind of late, so we're probably gonna lose light pretty quickly. So sorry about that. <laughs> and I also, as you can tell, still have eyeshadow on. I took the rest of my makeup off yesterday, but didn't take off the eyeshadow. So I feel like I look insane. Like not having any makeup anyway on your skin, except your eyelids. That's like, I'm pretty sure that's for the streets. It's for the streets and I'm okay with it. Also, as an aside, how cute is this? I love it. Anyway, so I hosted an award show. Yay. Now it was really cool. Um, I thought I would just talk about it a little bit because why not? That's what this channel's for, right? People have questions. People have been talking to me about it, so I thought I would talk about it. That's why my nails are so fancy. And my, my eyelashes are so fancy. I just feel fancy. So I'm in San Francisco right now for the Game Developers Choice Awards or for GDC, which is the Game Developers Conference. I've been coming to GDC since 2015. That's almost 10 years ago. Oh my God. And the first time that I went to GDC, uh, I was still an independent journalist. And I remember walking those halls and being like, fuck video game development is so cool. And now I do that and that's awesome. So I presented an award to one of my best friends in the world, Steven Spawn at the GDC awards a few years ago. Uh, he got the ambassador award and asked me to present for him. So I did, I wrote a little speech and gave him his award. Otherwise I've been in the room a bunch of times. And then um, this year they asked me to host it. And this was decided last year sometime before all of the layoffs. Which, by the way, I'm going to include my entire speech at the end of this video in case you would like to watch it. So if you want to see the full speech, I'll put it at the end of this vlog. Um, it's about three minutes, the opening speech. My whole thesis was literally like, you guys hear from me enough. I would much prefer let the developers speak. You don't need to hear me say things. So I kept it short. Just said the things that I felt like I needed to say and then cut it off. But yeah, I'll leave that uh, at the end. So they asked me to host sometime last year before the layoffs. I was super excited, honored to be a part of it. Um, flew me out to San Francisco, put me in this nice hotel. I have my badge here. You know, I've been working at Santa Monica Studio for um, four years now, and it will st still never not be cool to me to read that. Like to me, for me to have an official badge to a convention that says writer Santa Monica Studio is still cool. That's still like, oh, I do that? That's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Wow, what am I doing? But yeah, then all the layoffs happened and I was like, fuck, this is gonna be such a rough year to do this because it's like very difficult to get in on a stage and celebrate people. But I had agreed and like, I wouldn't bail just because it's difficult. That's, you don't, you can't do that. That's not how a human works. My whole thing was I just like, why be up there if not to say something that advocates for game developers, especially now as one and, and this is Game Developers Choice Awards. It's literally like voted for by game developers. Like that's how it works, which I really like. But yeah, I, you know, mentioned them and I hope I did a good job. Uh, I wanted to make sure it was funny. Obviously I've written and hosted my own video game award show, which is the Video Game Accessibility Awards that hopefully we bring back sometime this year. I had to skip last year because I knew that Santa Monica Studio with God of War Ragnarok would have been nominated for everything. So that felt wrong, even though I'm not involved in the nomination process at all. I just write the show. It, ju it just felt like a thing that I should maybe not do. <laughs> I feel like a lot of video games uh, award shows, we take ourselves way too seriously. Like the speeches are always so boring. Um, even though they can be very heartfelt and people who work in games are very genuine and passionate, I feel like a lot of it's like the art that shapes the worlds that we love. And it's just, sometimes it feels to me like the games industry trying to prove that it's important to itself like trying to prove that it's not just for kids or whatever. It just comes across that way to me. That it's like, okay, yeah, I love video games, right? That's why I do what I do. But like, we can have fun as well. They are fun. I know they're fun. I had a Twitter argument with somebody about this one time. I think it was a journalist about like the suggestion that fun is a reductive word where video games are concerned. Video games are art. They're not just fun. Nah, they're fucking fun, dude. They're really fun. <laughs> and I think that you can have something be art 
and have it be emotionally expressive and still be fun. It seems silly to me that fun is treated as though it's a negative in any way. Um, so my whole thing with any award show that I have written any speech for, um, when I presented an award at DICE, I also just, I just make jokes. I just like, oh, I like to make a joke. So thankfully GDC were really hands off with me about the script. Um, they didn't make any edits to anything that I said. I did say one thing in my closing that was not scripted, but um, yeah. And then I asked three friends to join me on stage, which is Harry Kruger, who's the game director of Returnal. I asked Harry to do best design. Um, if you're not familiar with Housemarque's games, I just felt like Harry doing best design made so much sense. Um, and also I love Harry. He's great. Uh, he used to be at Housemarque, recently left after 15 years at Housemarque. Um, but very big fan of Harry. Have a lot of time for Harry. Very fun, funny, charming man. And then I asked Zalavan Nelson to do best narrative. He uh, made a game that you may have recently seen me play called El Paso Elsewhere. Banjo is in it. But he's also running a studio called Strange Scaffold, and I feel like he's just a really great writer. So much experience, such a sweet dude, also very funny, like, just a very big fan of him. Um, felt like he was a great pick for narrative. And then I asked Liana Rupert, who uh, some of you may know as the Bungie community manager, she got laid off. She also worked, I think it was Game Informer for a bit. Um, I've streamed with her before. I asked Liana to do Social Impact because I feel very strongly that She's somebody who talks about social impact in a positive way. Like, I feel like she actually cares and she's not just virtue signaling or bullying. Like, frankly, I love the impression that plenty of people who get on the internet soapbox and scream about certain virtuous causes are doing it because they're schoolyard bullies, but this just like allows them to be schoolyard bullies in a way that they feel justified. Not a huge fan of that. Liana is not that. I think she's someone who just like genuinely actually cares. The other thing obviously was what I wore. So I had my friend Texas De La Rosa fly out to do my hair and makeup. And for my hair, I was like, yeah, I wanna, I sent a photo. Cause I was like, probably this, because the, I knew the dress was like this like strappy side thing. Um, so I didn't want to like have all my hair cover ruining that because that's the whole point of it. I couldn't wear a necklace either. So I sent a photo for my hair, but for my makeup, I was like, do whatever you want. Literally whatever you want. I don't feel like I'm a person who knows very much about makeup. And obviously you have to wear like quite a bit of makeup when you're on a stage lighting like that. Uh, cause otherwise you just end up looking like stark white and like your face doesn't exist. It's a thing they have to do with like theater to wear a fair amount of makeup. But yeah, I was literally like, I trust you dude, do whatever fuck you want. And he did. And I felt like I looked very nice. I almost never do red lipstick. I always do like a nude kind of lipstick. It's this actually, this was exactly what he put on my lips. It was right there. It's called Vice Liquid Lipstick. Rocksteady is the color apparently. So there you go. And then I wore clip on earrings. I do not have my ears pierced. I only have this one piercing over here that they call a helix. Uh, I don't have these parts of my ears pierced. So I wore just like really cheap clip on earrings. They were $2, dangly. Just because when I've seen other women do dresses that were off the shoulder, that's what they did. And so it, I thought it looked nice and it seemed like the right call. And yeah, the dress itself cost me $32 from a company called Meshki. And again, I, I will often wear dresses like that if I go to like entertainment industry events that I usually like just don't post pictures of. Like uh, I've been to a number of fancy things that you will never have seen me post pictures of because it's not my industry and I don't need to post pictures of myself all the time. But for the games industry, I usually um, dress down a little or like try to make myself like just a little more low key. As a woman who is aware that I have a body type that is basically inherently sexual, I'm aware of that. No matter what I wear, people will take it sexually. Um, and that's just because of my figure and the way that it is. Like I said, I know that, um, but I also feel like I sometimes like kind of oppress myself. I, I am catering the way that I'm dressing to making sure other people are comfortable being around my body. And that sucks a lot of the time because I too like to feel pretty and not oppressed. That's a very, that word sounds very extreme. It's an extreme way to say what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is true. That it's like, I am always trying to make myself more, I don't know, muted, I guess. Um, in order to make other people feel comfortable or to prevent people from getting mad at me, which obviously a lot of you will have heard me discuss before. I have to dress a certain way on YouTube in order for the subscribers I have to exist, right? Like if you look 
feminine, they'll just call you a slut and assume you don't know anything about video games. And I'm aware of that. I basically have a YouTube uniform where I like, I stream the same way. And it's not like I should care about those people at all, but I also, and like I don't, I don't respect their opinions, but I'm also actively aware that for the content that I make, which I get a lot of respect for, which I'm very grateful for, I would not be as successful if I dressed a different way. Uh, Any time where I happen to make a video on a hot day in something that you can even slightly see my chest, there's so much more anger or ne negativity or I lose subscribers, right? So I kind of have to make it look like I, again, don't have a feminine figure. It's like wearing a uniform for that audience, basically. Um, like, I'd love to say that I'd do whatever the fuck you want, but it's like dressing a certain way for an office job, really. But I don't dress that way in real life or on Instagram as much because I don't, just, that's specifically for that kind of content, right? Um, but for this occasion, yeah, I was like, look, I got asked to host an award show. I follow a bunch of women in other industries who host things at award shows or host the entire award show like I did. And they always look feminine and beautiful and are allowed to look sexy. And I was like, you're probably only gonna host an award show one time. GDC doesn't ask people back. So I was like, fuck it. I will wear something that I myself feel very good in, that I feel pretty in, that makes me feel feminine, especially when, again, there are a lot of people in the games industry, a lot of men who've held that stage for the vast majority of the time. Or there are expectations put on women to look a certain way, and I think that I'm like in enough of a position um, of power, feels like the wrong word, but of power in the games industry where it's like, you can't cut me down because of what I choose to wear at this point. So I wear whatever the fuck I want. So I basically wore something that I felt like I looked pretty in. Something that I would normally wear to anything outside of video games. And yeah, it's from a company called Meshki, literally $32 on sale. I really like the dress. The only thing I would criticize it for is because it's like this swoop thing with the slit in the middle, it just makes it one boob just really gets squished. Just left boob really, really got squished, uh, which I need that, obviously when I tried it on before the event. Not much you can do about that though. It's like the cut, the way the cut is, it pays off. I think it's a really, really pretty dress. Ooh, we're really losing light now. This looks like I filmed it in 2007. Um, and yeah, the other thing that, that people were asking me about is like, people always ask if I get nervous with stuff like that. And I don't at all. Speaking in front of a room of people, panels, create a clash, GDC awards, not even a little bit nervous. I don't get nervous about, ooh, well, light just turned off. <laughs> Look at this go. I don't get nervous in front of crowds, even a little bit. It means absolutely nothing to me. I get nervous speaking to people one-on-one, -on -one, especially if I don't know them very well or like small groups. That's when I'm uncomfortable. I'm very, very comfortable around certain people who I'm very good friends with, but uh, for the most part, way prefer to speak to a crowd than to speak to a small group of people. <laughs> the light is gone. There's actually, what's crazy right now, I don't have a single light on. I'm being lit by the moon right now. That's kind of cool. That's so far away, dude. Um, I'm trying to think of like things people have been asking me about. People are asking me about the dress and why I chose it in a very respectful way. Um, I'm sure there's some disgusting parts of the internet talking about that dress, but I'm not going to look at any of them. Why would I ever do that? I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, huge thank you to GDC for having me. It's very cool to have stuff like that in my career, to, to get to do something like that. To be like, oh, wow, I, did I make it? I might've made it. And that's crazy. I'm just so happy with where I'm at in life in general. And it's like a real honor to get to do the stuff that I do after the past 10 plus years at this point of, like pretty much tireless work, so. To everybody who watched, thank you. Everyone who came in person, thank you. I, uh, yeah, we'll put this, this speech will be right now. My opening speech will be right now after this video. And then I'll leave a link if you want to watch the full Twitch stream of the whole award show. All right, enjoy my GDC speech, bye. Please welcome to the stage, your host, Alana Pierce. Welcome to this year's Game Developers Choice Awards. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Alana, and I am unbelievably honored to be your host this evening. But I have to admit, sort of a bummer of a year to have been asked to celebrate the games industry for no particular reason. Mostly the record layoffs, though. So it's 
It's been great. Uh, it's honestly a really tough year to have had to have write this speech. I mean, people in this room have lost their jobs. People who attend GDC every year have had to cancel this year because being here at all is sort of an extravagant luxury that's difficult to commit to when you don't know when your next paycheck is coming. We've lost people with years of experience who worked hard to make some of the games that have been nominated tonight, but more importantly, we've watched our friends get laid off. We've seen how it impacts their families, their children, their... Oh, um, <clears throat> sorry, I mean, I love the company. All, all companies, uh, the stock market is actually the best thing to happen to video games. Okay, <laughs> that was close. Uh, but really, it's impossible to have the awards this year without acknowledging the immense talent that we've lost and the people who dedicated their lives to this industry that it effectively spat out because stock market arrow must only go up. Okay, that one was fine. In saying that, the honest framing here is that we're here tonight to celebrate those people, to celebrate all of the teams who work hard to bring people all over the world genuinely, some of the most memorable, enjoyable experiences of their lives. Thank you. My life is better because of all of you. Now, this is now never how you want to start a sentence. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I heard on Reddit that despite all of this, game devs are actually all very lazy and money hungry. They don't even really play video games. They hate games, in fact. If you're a programmer in this room and you chose to work in the video game industry for any reason other than because you love them, how's that plan working out for you? I don't know about you guys, but I personally chose to work in the games industry for the notorious job security or the work-life balance. I'm joking. It was for the unanimous and endless Twitter praise. They love me over there. Sometimes I wonder if we deserve it, though, because video games are like clearly abominations, like God didn't want them to exist. At any moment during development, a hundred things are broken all at once, and the only logical conclusion is that they aren't supposed to exist. They are demons. We claw from the code as an affront to nature, and somehow they eventually come out like completely against their own will. They're trying so hard not to get made, to do anything they possibly can to prevent creation, and we go, yeah, the next five years of my life and see about that, you fucking punk. <laughs> and then here they are. You cannot convince me that Baldur's Gate 3 or any of tonight's nominees are anything other than a defiant miracle against God. <laughs> Which leads me to our first award of the evening, Best Technology. In spite of everything games do to defy their own development, these nominees have excelled in making systems, procedures, and tech that blew us out of the water in 2023. It's a job that anyone who doesn't do it can't possibly understand, and is simultaneously one of the most important parts of the whole development process. Here are the nominees for Best Technology. <laughs> 